Well, you know, I was pretty uh, pretty confident that Texas would be heading to the Pac-10 uh, along with the other schools. wasn't sure about A&M with the SEC. But it looks like today uh, Texas Longhorns have decided to stay in the Big 12 after losing two members. Uh, and so we're going to have a 10-team Big 12 with A&M. And, uh, you know, Texas, Texas got what it wanted in this. Texas got to keep the conference together, keep the rivalries intact. More than, more than that, uh, got a bigger TV contract and had the option maybe later down the line of creating their own television network uh, where they can get more money and get more, um, you know, more revenue coming in. Or we already got a lot of it anyways. So, yeah, you know, and I, I've been beating my chest a lot uh, these past couple weeks, you know, talking about Texas, how people want Texas, and I, I'm not going to deny that. And I, I actually take a lot of pride in the fact, and a lot of, you know, a lot of fans on here don't want to admit it, but it's not the fans that make the decision. It's actually the Bucks and the people running the other conferences, um, and all of them have expressed that they would love to find some way to get the University of Texas uh, into their conference uh, because the eyeballs and things of that sort. Um, so yeah, and you know, Texas A&M was poised to go to the SEC to break away from Texas to get out of uh, our shadow and uh, really try to do something on their own. And, you know, I made fun of them. And I, I knocked them for that uh, in my little trash talk video. But, no, I, I do. I think that showed a lot of guts from Texas A&M uh, to say, hey, you know, we don't, we don't need Texas, that we can live it on our own uh, and go to a much tougher conference than the SEC. Um, but, you know, Texas, Dan Beebe came out with this new television contract. Texas looked at it. Texas decided they wanted to stay. And in turn, the Board of Regents at A&M and the rest of the places decided to follow. Uh, so now we're in a very, very uh, subpar conference in the Big 12 with two less teams, losing the only viable team in the Big 12 North in Nebraska and also losing Colorado. Um, for college football fans, this isn't good, especially Big 12 football fans. If you just like to watch good football games, uh, this isn't good. Um, you know, the, the conference is already kind of watered down as is. You know, I talked about in, in videos before, uh, even before the expansion stuff, back during the season about how terrible the Texas Longhorns' home schedule was of, you know, us going up to DKR and watching us just pound some team that didn't belong on the field with us. Um, you know, we had Texas Tech gave us a good ball game, but after that, here at home, nobody gave us a, no one gave us a game. Um, you know, the, other than Texas Tech, I talked about, you know, Kansas coming here was our biggest home game, and we ended up just mopping the floor with them, like dropping like 52 on them, like 52-17. to 17. It was just a victory lap for Texas. Uh, and that was our biggest home game other than Tech. Uh, so you know, it, and and now you're you're moving Nebraska. So you the only team in the North who had a shot at knocking off uh, OU and UT is gone, and the North is terrible. Uh, all of them in football are terrible. I'm not talking about basketball because in basketball, you know, Mizzou and Kansas are really coming. In Kansas State are really coming along, um, but uh, football wise, you know, Iowa State and Kansas State they're not contenders, and they're not going to be contenders. K State fans, uh, yes. Yes, K-State fans, you can beat Texas. I'm not doubting that. Anyone can beat Texas. Okay, anyone can beat anyone uh, on any given Saturday or Sunday. When I say that you can't compete with Texas, is that you can't put a season together of 10 wins straight. Um, you know, with 10 win seasons, I don't know, since 2001, something like that. I mean, we've had a lot of them in a row. We put seasons together. We have winning seasons every year. Kansas State doesn't do that. Okay, so that's what I mean by that. So, and you can't deny that. I'm not, and I'm not doubting that Kansas State beats us in all the sports. I understand that we're snake bitten with them, uh, but it is what it is. And, and Mizzou and Kansas, those are uh, imposter football schools, because um, every time you've seen those two schools, even in their heyday these past couple of years, anytime they go up against the Horns, uh, the Sooners, or Texas Tech, even uh, they get rolled. So, but out of this whole thing, you know, Texas is the big winner out of this, and we get all the money, and we get all, you know, the, the easier road that people are calling it, the easier road uh, to, a, to a conference championship, only have to beating Oklahoma, so they, in turn, get an easy road as well. Um, the big ones here who are really upset about this are te is Texas A&M. Uh, I think 90 to 95 percent of the student body, which is what I saw, were wanting to go to the SEC, uh, but the Board of Regents and the President and all that kind of stuff decided to vote and uh, stick with Texas, stick with the conference. And, uh, you know, I think I, I, I see a lot of uh, Aggies who are really, they're, they're sick of Texas, and I would be too. You know, Texas Texas does not just on the field and stuff. It has been a, uh, you know, w when you have the most money, you get to make the rules. And right now Texas is making all the rules for this conference. And I know that, uh, you know, A&M isn't happy about that, and I wouldn't either if I was in their shoes. So I don't doubt, and all the all the flack that Texas is getting from A&M, 
I understand it. I, I've given it to. Um, and now it's hard to hear like a Texas fan complain about oh, our schedule's so boring <laughs> when you know you're not the team getting uh, getting waxed because you can't. You know, the there's one school out there who's getting all the money. Um, so I understand it. I I do. So th- this move here, I was wanting to go to the Pac-10. I wouldn't even mind to go in the SEC. You know, I, I, to change things up, to get a new schedule, not to remove the rivalries. You know, I'd love to keep OU and and Texas A&M and even Texas Tech. Uh, together um, and go to the Pac-10 or the SEC, whichever, uh, but just to change things up a little bit, to see, to, to, to test the, the Longhorns against other things. But the Board of Regents, I think, here didn't want to do that because uh, this was the best offer for Texas, at least financially. So, um, so yeah. So, here we are in the Big 12 full of 10 teams with uh, Oklahoma looking like the only real landmark in stopping us from winning the conference. It's going to be one of those things where if the Horns or even the Sooners lose a game that's not against each other, it's a huge upset, and that's just how it's going to be. Um, it's going to make a hard case if you lose lose one game or even go undefeated and you're tied somewhere uh, with a team from a tougher conference like the Big Ten now or uh, the SEC. Um, but I, I do have confidence that if Texas is one of those teams uh, that's undefeated, tied with other schools, uh, Texas will probably get the nod just – money and tradition and uh, eyeballs, you know. And I've said that's a bad thing for college football. I said, you know, that the fact that uh, championships can be decided by how much money you bring in, um, that's not good for the sport. So uh, Texas is the big winner in this, uh, but I can't say that I'm super happy about this. Uh, this was a, a decision made purely about money and wanting to dominate financially and not really giving the fans uh, what we here uh, want to see. But we're still going to go to the games, and they know that. So can't blame them for making the decision. Hook'em Horns, Texas Fight. See you guys later.